One of my favorite aspects of editing December is hearing what people say about the contents of each issue when they come out. Most of the people in my, my own personal life that are not part of the December world are not in the literary world at all, so they didn't really even know what a literary journal was when I got involved. And many of them hadn't read a poem ever that hadn't been assigned to them in school. So after volume 25.1 came out last spring, a lot of people commented to me about Toby Cogswell's poems. She had two in that issue, which I, both of which I know she's going to read for us. And after that issue came out, my sister-in-law said, my favorite poem was the sex one. <laughs> I wasn't sure exactly which one she was referring to. So I said, um, which sex poem? <laughs> she said, you know, the one about the woman who used to have sex on her kitchen counter but doesn't anymore. <laughs> That was an interesting take, I thought. <laughs> then a friend said, mentioned to me after having read December, that she just gave up coffee for tea, just like that poem you had in December. And then yet someone else said to me, oh, I love that poem with all the flowers, the lavender and the roses and the hydrangeas. I could see all of that. And all I could think was, how could a single 18-line poem be read so differently? And that experience is testimony to the power of Toby Cogswell's poems. She's a multiple pushcart and best of the net nominee and co-editor of the San Pedro River Review, with, along with her husband, Jeffrey Alfier, whose work has also appeared in December. And Toby has published six chapbooks, and in 2012 and, and 2013 was shortlisted for the Fermoy International Poetry Festival. Our next issue of December will include another of Toby's poems, titled, Grandma's Got a Blowtorch. I can't wait to hear what people have to say about that. It's my pleasure to introduce Toby Kine's poems. Strong enough 
bandages not tight enough, mist or stolen signals perfume the acrid bitter of defeat. Innings now madden to stillness and fate, spirit and strength have done their deed. Late night calls home for celebration or mercy, neither diminish a holy wish to play under brighter lights and boisterous clouds, crowds before the clock expires on his yearning dream to feel the expansive miracle of larger stadiums. A shot at the majors looms for names that survive the roster. Let his superstitions, his graceful hopes be redeemed. Let the road home cleanse himself of all of solitary travel. Grandma's got a blowtorch. <laughs> my mom is here and my son is here. But Ellen, this is not grandma, okay? <laughs> Just want to make sure. Alright. Grandma's got a blowtorch. She makes creme brulee wearing welder's helmet. Can change canister lights with just a reach up, no ladder, can make a bank deposit, coffee, and birthday cake for the little one and to be all at the same time. She babysits her grandkids for entire summers, chats up the mailman, argues with parking enforcement, and sugars frozen grapes to be used in counting lessons after camp, a snack to be earned. You don't mess with grandma, she'll burn you down. Short sheet your bed, raise your rent. She said goodbye twice to husbands. One dead, one run off to sit at the bar, no smoking allowed, not a blue flame in sight, his chest hair finally regrown. <laughs> she needs kisses from the kids, a canister of propane, and the money on time. When she's wearing her hairnet, best watch out. Be on your best behavior, be ready to run. Grandma's got a blowtorch, she's not afraid to use it. <laughs> I should say my dad is here also, and I don't believe she's ever burned his hair. <laughs> Those things I don't know, I suppose. Okay, this one is called um, In the Dark, In the Rain, The Night. Light the fire and open a window. Smell the smoke mixed with earth, mixed with red, mixed with blood. Rain glimmers the lights like hockey prints. When the power goes out, the silence takes us back. Remembered art leaves us to our own harmonies. I hear all the words you do not say. Wrap your leg over mine, I need more heat. But first open a rich merlot. Pour just one glass by the only candle we can find. I want you near me. In this quiet of the dark, I crave to learn you. The music of everything you are beats a powerful concerto rich in woodwinds and brass, a lovely melody. Stand and take a bow. You are the only one with a solo this evening. <laughs> More, maybe like three more, three poem morning. Um, so, um, for some reason, they have water in them, so because you know I can get my cast wet, so I guess I'm writing about water. Um, okay. Anyway, this one is called Evening in Obam. Um, a table for sitting, the profile of your strong jaw as you scan the horizon for boats and wayfarers. A rooftop chapel of silence, but for the outside flutes of wind brushing leaves, birds heading home, and the crinkle of water along the shoreline as fairies slowly cruise to sleep until beginning again with the sun. Forested ruins spotlit by stars and us, holding hands, a bottle of red and one of water between us. Our blended observations deliberately low, as an audience will whisper while leaning toward the orchestra, waiting for those, for those first real notes of night. <laughs> Sorry I'm a little nervous. I, I can hear myself when that's 
that's the wrong word? Okay. <clears throat> this one is called Trawler of the Northern Lights. There's something about a love letter delivered by the mailboat semi-weekly run. First offloaded our haddock and cod, some flash frozen miles offshore, some faltering in creels and traps. Lobster, their tendrils winding through the metal mesh like leaves tenderly climbing in trellis, heaved up on deck by men in rain slippers over thick wool sweaters knitted by wives. Home, by fireplaces, accustomed to being alone, while their men bring a piece of their lives to the counties of northern lights and endless darkness. Next offloaded, the hardware. Boxes of screws, beams, parts for cars once driven by our grandparents, cars that found their way north, drivable only a few weeks each year when the snow melts, ancient tracks uncovered and dried in weak sun. Then medical supplies, always needed. Newspapers, now a few weeks old. Books, ready by, read by the crew and exchanged for the ones from last trip. And finally, the mail. Soggy, fragile, stinking of fish, but never unwelcome. A reminder of patience, modeled with raindrops posing as tears. A check mark on the calendar, you will be together soon. Soon enough, the boat of the bringer will take you home. Mm -hmm. um, my last poem, and so this is my um, my my uh, code for you, Jeff, to come get me when I'm done. This this poem is called Cape Split, and there is an epigraph that is called that is. Cape Split is quite literally the end of the world. And that's a Google quote. One, pain is like the prenup you forgot to get. <laughs> it takes all the sweetness, leaves you with the pawn tickets. You will never be able to buy back an unfurled forehead, true smile, and the grace of comfort. Two, so you sit in the bar. Listen to complaints of other people's unwanted house guests, drink just enough. One more winter outlives its welcome as you lick your cold lips, search for a warm face. Three, the weather is ice over shade. You need an elbow to pick you home. This is not the first time. The tide is out, you are resting on mud, you need a pilot who knows your analogies are weak and your pride is mighty. Like a ship a sail with no engine, you pray for wind to lead you past the soft swell of young lovers to the breakwater of hearth, to tea, and the quiet compass of a stranger's voice bidding you safe travels, small hearts.